に潜入やさん In 1964, a film was released that gave us poignant glimpses of a tragic war fought in the cold, barren ranges of the Himalayas. My name is Kabir Bedi, and today we climb those high mountain passes where buried in the snow lie tales of courage and bravery. It was along those lonely passes that India and China waged a wasted war, where guns had fired in anger in a futile bid to demarcate national boundaries. And glory belonged to those who gave their lives in the service of their nation. October 23rd, 1962. At 16,500 feet, Bamla was already covered in snow. A foot track led down to the important town of Tawang, some 26 kilometers away, 500 meters south of the pass. The D Company of the 1 Sikh Regiment stood guard against a terrible enemy bearing down on India. At five that morning, the enemy attacked in great numbers. The first wave was beaten back by the six. Platoon commander Subhidhar Joginder Singh radioed back to company headquarters asking for ammunition as they had almost run out. The Chinese were regrouping for another massive attack. The company headquarters asked Subhidhar Joginder Singh to fall back, to which he replied that he and his men would not allow the Chinese to get through. When the second wave came, Subedar Joginder Singh of the 1 Sikh Regiment asked his men to fix their bayonets and led them in a hand-to-hand -hand fight to death against the invaders. Joginder Singh fell, grievously injured. He was captured by the Chinese and died in custody. But the time he and his men bought allowed for reinforcements to rush into Bamla and for artillery fire to be directed at the enemy. The Chinese suffered great losses and were unable to breach the wall that D Company had mounted. Subedar Joginder Singh was awarded the Paramvir Chakra for his bravery in the battlefield. Many an act of heroism could not stop the much better equipped and trained Chinese army from overrunning Indian positions. Where a Joginder Singh blocked their path, the Chinese horde bypassed the obstruction like water around a rock. Large chunks of Indian territory were gobbled up as idealistic politics and inferior planning put the entire country at risk. Not many in Delhi had anticipated the implications of a belligerent China awaking from its slumber. The border between India and China crisscrosses the Himalayas from Kashmir in the west to present-day Arunachal Pradesh in the east. And along its 3,488 kilometers lay the seeds of contention that led to an all-out war. In the western sector, the Chinese provinces of Xinjiang and Tibet border Kashmir. India says China has occupied 43,000 square kilometers of Indian territory. This includes the 5,180 square kilometers illegally ceded to them by Pakistan. In the central sector, there's Himachal Pradesh and Uttarakhand on the Indian side, with Tibet on the Chinese side. Shipkila and Karnik are claimed by China in Himachal, as well as Pulam, Parahori, Kungri Bingrila, Laptal and Sangha in Uttarakhand. In the eastern sector, China claims 90,000 square kilometers of Indian territory. And that includes almost all of Arunachal Pradesh. And it is here that Tawang strategically holds the key to the defense of the entire region. 
When we were deployed there, we we were not there to fight. We were there to claim the territory that up to this place it is ours. We neither had the proper clothes to sustain ourselves there, nor we had the weapons, nor we had the even we had not constructed the fighting bunkers. Three years earlier. On the 31st of March 1959, a young man dressed in peasant's clothing had crossed the Bamla Pass from Tibet into Arunachal and made his way to Tawang. Eight days before that, and 500 kilometers to the north, the People's Liberation Army of China had marched into his home in Lhasa. Two months and six days short of his 25th birthday, the Dalai Lama of Tibet had not just entered India; he had also begun a life of exile here. Following him, over 90,000 of his supporters crossed the Mukmohun Line, that a demarcated land between India and Tibet from British times. Within three months of Tenzing Gyatso. The 14th Dalai Lama of Tibet seeking refuge in India. Chinese troops opened fire at Indians on the border. Skirmishes did take place, but nobody could visualize. Even at that time, the negotiations were on, so nobody could imagine that the Chinese are going to attack in such massive strength, and in places where it suited them and did not suit us. A small picket near Migyun in eastern Ladakh came under attack, and one Indian soldier was killed. Another Indian outpost at Longju in northeastern Ladakh was almost run over. And as the days went by, the border skirmishes began to increase in number. Trouble was in the air. In 1947, when the British left India. There was no clear line of control that demarcated the newly independent India and the territory of Xinjiang and Tibet in the western and central sectors. In the official 1950 map of India, Kashmir's boundary east of the Karakoram Pass was shown as boundary undefined. A sort of ambiguity prevailed over large tracts of land, and nothing would have mattered had China remained politically weak and militarily unassertive. On its southern boundaries, but in 1949, the Communist Party under Mao Zedong seized power in China and declared the formation of a People's Republic with the avowed objective of awakening China after a century of humiliation. In October 1950, 80,000 soldiers of the People's Liberation Army marched into Tibet and declared it to be part of China. By 1951, the Chinese army was camped in Lhasa, and a treaty was signed, which proclaimed that Tibet was a national autonomous region, to be ruled by a Chinese commission, with the Dalai Lama as a figurehead ruler. Slowly, China began tightening its grip over Tibet, and resistance to its rule began to spread and grow. While all this was unfolding, India found itself in a peculiar situation. It was friends with Tibet, but wanted to be friends with China. Political prudence pointed towards China, yet historical ties supported Tibet. In 1954, India threw in its lot with China with the Panchshil Agreement. But two years later, in 1956, China built a road cutting through Ladakh's Aksai Chin area, connecting Xinjiang and Tibet. Making the Aksai Chin area far more accessible to the People's Liberation Army than to the Indian Army. In the eastern sector, Nefa, then the Northeast Frontier Agency, Indian troops began patrolling heights, which China saw as a violation of the disputed Mackmahon Line. By and large, Mackmahon Line followed the Crest Line, which is the principle of a border in mountainous terrain. And Chinese were well aware of that. So were the Indians. There were a few places where there was a difference of perception, you know. So 
it was not that the whole border was disputed but unfortunately the chinese said that macmahon line is a imperial legacy which has been thrust on them by march 1959 the situation in tibet had turned volatile on march the 10th the chinese opened fire in the streets of lhasa and on the 17th it started firing mortars aimed at the potala palace After hours of indecision, on the suggestion of his advisers, the Dalai Lama fled Lhasa, disguised as an ordinary Tibetan soldier. For the next 13 days, he and a small entourage fled towards India, dodging the Chinese army. When the Dalai Lama crossed over into India, Prime Minister Nehru granted him political asylum, and this may have been the final excuse that China needed to go to war. with india